Intel versus AMD, always a good comparison. Now, this over here is the Ryzen 7 5700G, so the latest APU from AMD. And it costs roughly around 350 pounds, something like that, or dollars. This over here is the Intel i9-11900K, and that costs around 550 or 600 pounds, somewhere around there. Quite a bit more expensive, but does that mean it's better when you don't have a dedicated graphics card? Well, in this video, we're going to find out which is better in DaVinci Resolve when you're editing and maybe waiting for your future graphics card. So, you might be thinking that this is not a fair comparison because the Intel costs so much more than the AMD system. If you look at it this way, both of them have 8 cores and 16 threads. Both of them have the latest technology, what AMD and Intel offer. AMD has actually a better or more powerful GPU inside if you do a Geekbench test, but the Intel has a bit more powerful CPU inside maybe 5 to 15% depending on a test, much more powerful in multi-core performance. Single core performance is quite a bit better than on the AMD. So as you can see, they both have weaknesses and strengths. So interesting is what is the actual performance on the live program? So if you want to check out these systems or these like test bench setups, check them out in the description below. I'm going to leave both of them down there. So we have DaVinci Resolve 17.3 open on both of these systems. I'm also using the full HD the timeline at the moment over here because I think if you're moving to 4k you probably you can still export that or upscale it to 4k if you want to when you're exporting this but I think like timeline come on let's let's work it like that so we know how good it is so this over here is a 4k 422 10 bit which isn't actually hardware accelerated but the timeline performance is so smooth so I'm just gonna press play and let's see what happens over here as well so as you can see, the GPU is quite a bit utilized. Uh, CPU is, you know, 20%, it's all right, but it plays back 24 frames per second, as you can see over there, no problem. This is 4K 422, 25 frames per second, a little bit lower, still 10 bit. And let's have a look at similar setup over here. Let's move on to here, this is SI. So it's a bit less compressed codec from Sony A7S III. And honestly, it's buttery, buttery smooth. So if you don't have a GPU, look at this, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Super, super smooth, no problem here. This middle bit timeline performance is a little bit more odd, but if you go to SI again, that's brilliant. 25 frames per second is somehow hard, but it does an okay job. Like, this is this is brilliant. Like, just look how smooth this is. Press play here, starts playing it back, no problem. Look, like GPU's 11% utilized, it's nothing. Let's move on to 60 frames per second. Let's see if 4K 60 frames is something that we can do on these systems. So I have two clips over here. One of them is 4K 4208-bit. So something that you would see like your from your mirrorless camera. It's not able to produce as many like frames as before because the 60 frames on the timeline. But let's press play, see if, yeah, it's fine. No problem. Looks like it's, no problem. Look, maximum we've used is 74 watts on the AMD. Now this over here is 422 10-bit. This is H.264 as well. And looks like it's playing it back all right. 60 frames per second, 422, that's very hard because this should go all on the CPU. So if you press play here, yeah, see like all the CPU, there's was a spike over there. Not so much on the GPU, but CPU definitely was used a lot more. 60 frames per second. It's not doing that great of a job, to be honest. I think AMD was playing this back much, much better. Even this 8-bit. Let's see the 422-bit. It's very laggy as well. So let's see if it can actually play it back. Yeah, it plays back 24 frames per second. When you scrub on the timeline, it still takes a little bit of time to think and then play back, but it's able to do it. Let's have a look at this, 422 now. It plays back. CPU is that much utilized. Let's see what's happening over here. Well, okay, we're using quite a lot more energy than 
of electricity than the AMD system, but it's still able to do it, no problem. 4K Redra. Let's see, what can it do over here? Let's have a look. Timeline performance. It's quite okay, actually. I mean, to be honest, it's very nice. Plays it back, no problem. Very good as well. Like, I've got nothing bad to say about the scrubbing of the timeline. Let's press play, see what happens. Oh. See? AMD can't play it back. That is fascinating. Well, eventually, like, the uh, AMD system catches up as well. So if I'm going to... Oh, okay. So the first clip is something where it struggles. The second clip is all right. Interesting, the DCI 4K is a bit easier for it to play back, even though there's more frames than the Ultra HD first clip, which actually has less frames per second as well. So that's interesting. If you press play on the second clip, it plays back in normally, but that is a weird phenomenon. 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 Phen phenomenon? Phen whatever the word is. C200 RAW then. Very, very smooth playback like okay the first bit here is a little bit choppy so let's press play see if we can do that i mean i'd say it's completely editable whoa this feels a little bit smoother and when pressing play it feels more responsive i think i'm gonna give the edge to amd system over here 5k red raw okay Timeline performance, so-so. Let's press play, see what happens. AMD system is not playing this back, like at all. That's interesting. I think it's literally just a driver driver issue over here because if we look, if we press play, nothing gets utilized actually in here. Hardly the GPU, hardly the CPU. It just stops like playing it back. Interesting, the timeline performance is worse on Intel than AMD. AMD was like, a bit more responsive. So let's press play and see what happens here. Plays back. Okay. Eventually catches up and plays back 24 frames per second. CPU is 100% utilized here. We'll give the win on 5K to Intel. Moving on to 6K. The timeline is... Not so responsive. Let's press play and see what happens. Okay, can it catch up? No, not really. This is... can't do it. Red Raw is a little bit hard for Intel system. See, AMD actually produces more frames on the timeline, which is interesting. This timeline is much more responsive than Intel system, but when we press play... I think I'm gonna give the edge here to the AMD, but like what you could do is also like timeline half the resolution. And then when it's half the resolution, I think it's gonna pr play it back. No, it doesn't actually. It's just the codec support on the GPU and on the CPU. It just can't figure it out. The red raw is hard for it to play back. So let's move on to the 6K B raw, which should be like a native codec, Blackmagic codec, whoa. See, it's something's going on over here. What is going on this? Oh, I think it's literally that the AMD, AMD GPU can't actually decode that footage. Or even the CPU, it doesn't know like what to do with the B-Raw. When it stops, it's all right. When we screw around, it makes random things. If you press play, it plays it back, but you've got some weird artifacts going on over here. Timeline is... is okay, but like playing back is a little bit choppy, to be honest. Like B-Raw is very nice codec to edit. The GPU is only utilized because it's 6K, but like the actual codec is quite all right. But I think Intel still has the edge over here. Last thing I want to try is a Canon R5 8K. So we know that the red is quite hard for this, uh, like both of the systems to play back. But let's have a look at like Canon R5 8K. Like this is AMD system over here. And scrubbing on the timeline, it's a bit of a lag. 
and it it can't quite do it. Press play, see if it does anything. So it, nah, it just can't quite play it back. But this clip, for example, on AMD system plays back quite all right. So let's move on to the Intel system. Let's see if that's any different. Scrubbing on the timeline. I'd say the AMD was a bit better. Because this is completely like laggy. Uh, let's have a look what's maxed out. I think it's the RAM. It can't just use that much RAM. But let's press play, see if that's any different. That's interesting. That was quite laggy at first, but now plays back quite normally. Let's see if we press play again. I think Intel system has an edge over here. So in conclusion, if you want to do some video editing, the Intel 11900K is much better on DaVinci Resolve than the Ryzen 7 5700G, just because just the hardware, like how they talk together with the program, the hardware and the program work so much better. The AMD has the hardware there, but for some reason just can't utilize it. The CPU is not utilized, the GPU is not utilized. So we have to wait for AMD to talk with DaVinci Resolve and well, Blackmagic and to like figure out how they can utilize this. So the Intel has quite a bit of an edge. So I wouldn't go with AMD if you want to do some editing. I think if it's lower like, you know, 4K or less editing, you can do it on the AMD as well because the, what AMD offers, you, you've got a massive upgrade path where on the Intel, you know, that's it. In here, you can put even 12 core or 16 core CPUs where this eight core is the maximum for this platform at the moment. So hopefully this helped you to decide which one do you wanna go for. Maybe if you don't have a GPU, you know like what the actual performance is when working with these CPUs here, which platform is better the AMD or Intel system, hopefully this helped you. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you like to see more, and my friends, I will see you in the next time. If you wanna check out these systems, I'm gonna leave them below. Thanks guys for watching, bye-bye.